Hey everyone, my name is Coach Young and I'm a teen instructor, research specialist for the Howard County Library System. Today, we're gonna to talk about 10 awesome books from our middle school summer reading list. Let's get into it. Ali Cross, Like Father, Like Son by James Patterson. Alex Cross's son, Ali, is an accomplished mystery solver and number one bestseller. A crime at a concert near his school sparks his newest investigation and it gets dangerous fast. Sometimes it's good to have a father in the detective business. Ali Cross just solved his first real case, and Alex Cross knows it's only a matter of time before his son finds a way to get into more trouble. Neither of them expected Ali to get caught up in another case so quickly. Ali and his friends were just hanging out in Anacostia Park, then they became witnesses to a crime. Alec wants Ali to stay far away from the investigation, but Ali isn't going anywhere, not when his new friend Zoe's in trouble. It's up to Ali to figure out why she's lying to the police and who she's protecting. This is Ali's toughest case yet, and as long as he trusts his cross instincts, he may just have a shot at solving it. Sunny Makes a Splash, a graphic novel by Jennifer L. Holm and Matthew Holm. It's summer, and Sunny is bored. Most of her friends are out of town. Her mom wants her to babysit way more than Sunny wants to babysit. There's nothing good on TV. The only place that's cool, and not in a boring sense, and cool, and not in a hot sense, it's the community pool. Sunny loves going there. And loves it even more when she's offered a job at the snack shack. Soon she's flinging fries and serving soft ice cream like a pro with the assistance of the very sweet boy who works with her. Sunny mom isn't sure she should be quite so independent, but Sunny's definitely sure. Life is best when it's free swim. Red, White, and Whole by Rajani LaRocca. Reha feels torn between two worlds. School, where she's the only Indian American student, and home, with her family's traditions and holidays. But Rhea's parents don't understand why she's conflicted. They only notice when Rhea doesn't meet their strict expectations. Rhea feels disconnected from her mother, or Ama. Although their names are linked, Rhea means star, and Puna means moon. They are universe apart. Then Rhea finds out her Ama is sick, really sick. Rhea, who dreams of becoming a doctor, even though she can't stomach the sight of blood, is determined to make her ama well again. She'll be the perfect daughter, if it means saving her ama's life. Poor Unfortunate Souls, A Tale of the Sea Witch, by Serena Valentino. The tale of the Sea King's daughter, Ariel, is a beloved one of losing and then finding one's own voice. The story has been told many times and in many ways. But always the Meryl girl wants more than her world can offer, and her father demands that she lives within the confines of her domain. Her rebelliousness cost the Little Mermaid her voice and nearly her soul. But the power of good prevails, and Ariel emerges proud and unchanged. And yet this is only half the story. So what of Ariel's nemesis Ursula, the Sea Witch? What led to her becoming so twisted, scorned, and filled with hatred? Many tales have tried to explain her motives, here is one account of what may have shaped the sea witch into a detestable and poor, unfortunate soul. Daughter of the Deep, a fantasy novel by New York Times best-selling author Rick Riordan. A modern take on 2000 Leagues Under the Sea, the story follows Anna Dakar, a freshman at Harding Bancroft Academy. Harding Bancroft is a five-year high school that graduates the best marine scientists, naval warriors, navigators, and underwater explorers in the world. Anna's parents died while on a scientific expedition two years ago, and the only family she has left is her older brother, Dad, who's also a student at HP. Anna's freshman year culminates with the classes we can trial to see, the details of which have been kept a secret. She only hopes she has what it'll take to succeed. All her worries are blown out the water when on the bus ride to the ship, Anna and her schoolmates witness a terrible tragedy that will change the trajectory of their lives. But wait, there's more. The professor accompanying them informs Anna that their rival school, Land Institute, and the Harding Pencroft have been fighting a Cold War for 150 years. Now that Cold War has been turned up to a full boil, and the freshmen are in danger of becoming fish food. In a race against deadly enemies, Anna will make amazing friends and astounding discoveries about her heritage as she puts her leadership skills to the test for the first time. Miles Morales, Shockwave. An original middle grade graphic novel from Graphics, starring Brooklyn Spider-Man, Miles Morales, 
by best-selling author Jessene Reynolds and Eisner nominee Pablo Leon. Miles Morales is a normal kid who happens to juggle school at Brooklyn Visions Academy while swinging through the streets of Brooklyn as Spider-Man. After a disastrous earthquake strikes his mother's birthplace of Puerto Rico, Miles springs into action to help set up a fundraiser for the devastated island. But when a new student's father goes missing, Miles begins to mix connections between a disappearance and a giant corporation sponsoring Miles' fundraising. Who's behind the disappearance? And how does that relate to Spider-Man? Read and find out. Nuestra America, 30 inspiring Latinas and Latinos who have shaped the United States. Written by Sabrina Bravavulius and illustrated by Gloria Felix. Nuestra America highlights the inspiring stories of 30 Latinas and Latinos throughout history and their incredible contributions to the cultural, social, and political character of the United States. 23 of the stories featured in this anthology are also included in the Molina Family Latino Gallery, the first national gallery dedicated to the Latinos at the Smithsonian. Nuestra America and the Molina Family Latino Gallery are initiatives led by the Smithsonian Latino Center to ensure that Latino art, history, and culture are represented throughout the Smithsonian Institution. Rising Water, the story of the Thai Cave Rescue by Mark Aronson. June 23, 2018. 12 young members of the Wild Boars soccer team and their assistant coach were exploring the Tham Luang Cave complex in Northern Thailand when disaster struck. A downpour flooded the tunnels, trapping the boys, who had to retreat farther and farther into the pitch black caverns. When the team's bikes were found at the entrance to the cave, Thai Navy SEALs, cave divers from around the world, and military teams with expert rescuers from the United States, China, and Australia rushed to the scene. Rising waters kept the rescuers out and sealed the boys in. Finally, on July 2nd, two British cave divers found the boys, a duel, Samong, a 14-year-old who at the time would have been considered undocumented in the United States, spoke English and understood the divers. But how would rescuers get the boys out? The international experts needed to turn their efforts from a difficult search to an impossible rescue. Award-winning author Mark Aronson brings to life this drama that's gripped the world. Through exclusive interviews and stories originally reported in many languages, he takes us beyond the day-by-day -day recital of events from the adventure and danger of cave diving to the rescue effort that highlighted the strengths of people from all backgrounds. Rags and Water is both a nail-biting adventure and a much needed vision of a world joined in courage and skill, not separated by boundaries. Strong Voices, 15 American Speeches Worth Knowing, illustrated by Koki Roberts. Strong Voices, 15 American Speeches Worth Knowing, it's a collection of significant speeches made by those who held the reins of power and those who didn't at significant times in history. Read the original words, sometimes abridged, sometimes in their entirety, that have shaped our culture's fabric. This collection includes Frederick Douglass's What to the Slave is the Fourth of July, Sojourner Truth's I Am a Woman's Right, Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address, George Washington's Farewell Address, Langston Hughes on the Black List of Our Lives, JFK's We Choose to Go to the Moon, Martin Luther King Jr.'s I Have a Dream Speech, plus many more. In the Shadow of the Fallen Towers, the seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, and years after the 9-11 attacks. Written and illustrated by Don Brown. A graphic novel chronicling the immediate aftermath and rippling effects of one of the most impactful days in modern history, September 11, 2001. The consequences of the terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center in New York City, both political and personal, were vast and continue to reverberate today. Don Brown brings his journalistic eye and attention to moving individual stories to help teens contextualize what they already know about the day, as well as broaden their understanding of the chain of events that occurred in the tax week. Profound, troubling, and deeply moving, In the Shadow of the Fallen Towers bears witness to our history and the ways it shapes our future.